now. I got the notes up there, I'm pretty sure. Then here's the other molehill. You'll reach new heights with my shock jump string. Does Kazooie do it? My legs are tired. <laughs> Don't worry, the turkey does all the work! Simply stand on a shock jump disc, then press and hold A! Hmm, your energy's a little low, I'll fill it up for you! Nice going, you've learned all the cove's new moves! So you might think, well we have the ability to fly, does the shock jump disc actually, like, do anything? Yeah, it's useful, because shock jump discs are way more common than the uh, flight discs. So if we just press the A button, it doesn't do anything, but if we hold it, You see how high we can jump with that. And on top of that, you don't even have to stay still while using it. So, like, we can run off of it while holding A. And you can turn that into a double jump. There's a lot you can do with it. It's a really cool move. Flight disc there, but not a whole lot we can do with that. Ow. This might be the time where I split up worlds into two videos, depending on how short I want them to be, so... If so, this might be the part where I break the video, and I'll see you next time. If that's the case, otherwise... Well, you get an extra long episode, don't you? Hey, bro. What's up? Hey, Leaky. No good for water. Can bear block hole with pebble? No, but we got eggs. Will that do it? Leaky patched up! Now me empty water for bear! Wow, um... Well, that was magic. That one tiny little bucket just... just... just took out all the water in the lagoon! What the heck? Now if we do a double jump on top of the castle, there are some more notes we can get. Getting these is a bit trickier if you've already drained the water. Otherwise, you can just swim towards them, but there is a blowfish that can blow you up. Anyhow, it's a sand castle. Let's see what's in there. Hey, Burgle, you're looking wise. Solve my puzzle and win a prize. Get the notes in here. So I'm looking around. Banjo-Kazooie. I wonder what we have to spell out. So yeah, we got to spell out Banjo-Kazooie on the floor, but there's a catch. As soon as you hit the first of the one, you've got only 100 seconds, and you can't hit t uh, tiles more than once. There's the J. Oh. It's supposed to be Banjo, not Badjo. <laughs> Banjo-Kazooie. The Elmo Flood Edition. Banjo. Now we gotta spell out Kazooie. K-A-Z. But now I need two O's and I can't use that O again. So there are two other O's on the floor I have to find. It's a pretty easy quote-unquote puzzle. So we can either roll into him four times, or we can ground pound him twice. Goodbye. Anyhow, lever jiggy to our name. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm just going out and stealing everything from the Pirate's Cove. What could go wrong? Uh -huh. Also, okay, this is going to be tough to explain. So that's Shark Food Isle. If you're playing on a new copy of the game, Shark Food Isle will not be raised up. It will just be a tiny little sign out in the middle of the ocean. I'll get more into that later on. But yes, I am aware that it looks different than it does in your folder. We'll make a bonus episode all about that. One of the most famous things in video games, honestly. Alright, we are 
maxed out on Phoenix. I already feel good. Alright, so now we can use these shock jump discs. See how awesome they are in these great So you can either go under the ground or you can just do a well timed jump to get across. We can use these jump discs to get into this hidden little cove to grab another jiggy. We already got five of them. Ginger, you are Yeah, that's why I like ground pounding the crabs, even though it takes a little bit of timing because you gotta ground pound where in front of where they're moving. <sighs> it's annoying to flip them over with the roll because you can flip them over and then they can just hit you and there's nothing you can do about it. Anyways. Oh look, it's more of these evil treasure chests. <laughs> that's another way you can get it, but it doesn't always work. Also be careful high jumping out because you can high jump right into their teeth and that can be bad. There's an extra life under there if you want. And you know what? I do want. Let's ground pound in so we go down lower. That's not even going to John speed. So are you guys ready for this? Hi, Snacker. Ouch. I'm glad you're enjoying that. Yeah. First hollow honeycomb piece is in a crate in the middle of nowhere on the ocean, and the draw distance in this game is bad enough that you literally can't see it unless you swim over there. Which you have absolutely no reason to do. Unless you already knew it was there. <laughs> and that's the easier one. That's more fair than the other one. So like you can see the crate, but you can't you couldn't see the hollow honeycomb piece. Unless your explorer's intuition is like, no, we must examine that crate. Be good luck finding that hollow honeycomb piece. Oh, this looks interesting. What's this? Follow the clues if you're looking for gold. Okay. You had me at gold. So what you can do is you can just fly over there, but at the same time, there's more in the world to explore along the way. For example, what if, where could this be? A set of crates. Oh, we're in the back of the cove. Oh no! Don't eat me, Snacker! Snackers, did someone say Snacker and eat in the same sentence? Yes, please. And all that leads to a jiggy! Nice platform. Alright, and are you guys ready for the... Well, hang on a second. Ow, oh, no, Snacker, no! Ow! Mmm, lovely. <laughs> oh, Snacker's hungry. <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna get bit by Snacker a lot unless you do this double jump out of the water constantly because you're so slow swimming on the surface. Snacker's like, oh, <laughs> you try to attack me? Alright, I'll just disappear into the void of Nevermore. Bada bing bada boom, you can't beat up Snacker. Ouch! Two mumbo jumps. 
more than me. That was free. And yeah, I high jumped into that, and now Benji and Kazooie are ticked off. Hey, Beehive, give me your honeycombs. <laughs> Benji and Kazooie are like, yay! We just killed a sentient honeycomb, like, a honey hive. Beehive. That is. I actually can't remember the banjo name. They're Puff Tups, or, yeah, they're Puff Tups in uh, Donkey Kong Country. I don't know what they are in here. And there's a Jiggy just lying at the bottom of the rock pool here. Pretty easy. Orange Jinjos at the edge of this ledge. <laughs> is it no fair? I was just enjoying the beautiful sunset that was going to happen. That blowfish is just like, ooh, hey. Come on, touch me! <laughs> I'm a living landmine. Don't you want hugs? No, I, I really don't. <laughs> what? <laughs> I love extra lives. I'm actually still missing a decent amount of notes, despite the fact that we've explored quite a bit of the level. What's at the bottom of your rock pool? Oh, a mumbo token. Yeah, might as well. Wow, we have 11 of those. Nine of which we have found. Or no, not nine. Eight of which we found in Trevor Trevor Cove. There's another X. Now it's like, oh, no, 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 no. I lied. Go over this way. It's much better. You just follow the arrows. Like Crazy Taxi says. Okay, so are you guys ready for the final hollow honeycomb piece? It's down here in the water. It's in an extremely obscure underwater part of the map, and Snacker's now just like, mm -hmm. I put that there as a trap. Mm -hmm. Yum. I love the chicken nuggets and Wendy's. <laughs> They're great. <laughs> Snacker, Snacker actually really needs to try chef for nuggets, because those are the best. So next, cool. I needed a little bit of a refill. I'll pick those up because. I no! I don't know why I'm freaking out so much. That's like a really easy recovery. This is super catchy music. And it really is. I could just stop Talon Trotting, but nah, I'm gonna keep on Talon Trotting. Yeah, this is what the treasure hunt's supposed to make you do, is you can just fly to the next part of the X, ground pound it, then there's another flight pad that you can take to the next part. So we've officially gone around the whole cove, and we're about to find some treasure. <laughs> You'll never find me now. Oh well, that's the. Oh hey. <laughs> You'll never find the giant X that appeared literally right next to you. I'm so clever. <laughs> Yikes! Please open me gently. What's that? You want me to burn brown pound you open? Boom! You can also run a tap rat. <laughs> Banjo's a bit of a sadist. It was Kazooie's idea. Alright, we still are missing two jiggies despite having explored almost all of the map. You might be wondering, well, where are they? Well, there's a little part of the map we haven't explored yet. As you may have imagined. That's where the final jiggy is and the last jiggy is. As well as the witch switch, which we haven't seen yet. So let's go back here and use the flight disc. There's a little hole here with a musical note! <laughs> oh, Snacker wants a more! <laughs> mm, lovely. <laughs> Stupid Snacker, get out of here. <laughs> Alright, well that, that was funny, I admit it. <laughs> Banjo's like, oh boy, I can't wait to grab that! No, <laughs> the shark's just like... 
So I'm, I'm just going to say, if you're missing just one musical note somewhere on the level, it's almost guaranteed to be that one. Because you can also use the flight pad to just fly up really high to reach the same point spot. Because this is just really high up on the cove. And the top has eggs on the trees. Isn't that cool? And there's no music, which is less cool. What's a clam doing up here? Final Jinjo. Good job. This is the exact same seagull sound effect that plays on Gloomy Galleon in Donkey Kong 64. Maybe that's just a stock seagull sound. Anyhow, let's just do a little bit of whoop doo playing. That's the official name for it. We are missing five notes. I hope they're all up here because I don't have a memorization of exactly where every note is. It's the lighthouse, and behind it is the witch switch. <laughs> Kana launches that out in the treasure trove cove lobby. Sweet. So you can rat a tat rat that open or use the Briggle Bash. Mumbo token. So we found 10 tokens on this level. That's a nice round number. Here's all the notes! You found all 100 notes on this world! Well done! Now we just shock jump disc up to the top and grab our final jiggy. Alrighty, and that's Treasure Trove Cove. Make sure you get the shock jump disc move before coming up to the lighthouse. Because I have forgotten to do that in the past. Oh, one thing I think I'll show off now before we leave the world. Uh, it's a very useful trick. It's, I believe, a glitch, but it's going to be really helpful. So if we... I'll demonstrate, so... So if we jump from the very top of the lighthouse down... That's splat height. Or splat height. That's, that's enough high enough that we will take fall damage. However, there's a way that you can fall from any height and not take any fall damage. So if we go from the exact same height, what we're going to do is if you do the ground pound, and then when you flip up from the ground pound, then take the fall, you will not take damage. So observe. You bounce, and then same height, but no splat damage. No fall damage. Anyhow, uh, let's just kill ourselves. Oh, I wanted to fall farther than that. Um, yeah. <laughs> What's wrong, Banjo? Is it tough? Let me know when you've had enough. Whoa! Your best note score for this world is now 100! Oh, yay! My favorite. Yeah, so if you die, then you instantly get warped back to the beginning of the level, and as you can see, all of your notes disappear, because it's like, okay, what's the, how many notes did you grab? That's your note score, you gotta collect them all again. That becomes really annoying in the last two worlds. But thankfully, I just did that on purpose, and I taught you a clever trick on how to avoid fall damage. And now, I'm not sure if they mentioned it or not, but after you, not even beat, but after you just visit the world, the lobbies will then be filled with enemies from that world. So in the Mumbo's Mountain Lobby, I believe it was termites. Yeah, termites were at the end of it after we left, when they weren't there before, and now there was a snippet here. So we can do a high jump on this can, and a high jump up here. I love how Granty went to the trouble of painting this, like the waves on the wall. And we can grab ourselves another G. Yeah, what? Alright, and that's it for World 2, Treasure Trove Cove. You can also high jump up there to reach the cannon that blasted it out, but the jiggy doesn't exist until after you press the witch switch. So, just keep that in mind. Alright, that was a fun world. I really love Treasure Trove Cove, and unfortunately next world is one of my least favorite in the game. But it's still going to be an entertaining watch. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope you tune in for that. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.